Sarah with the Volusia County Public Library System. I'm coming to you from the Ormond Beach Regional Library. On this episode of Volusia Gets Crafty, I'm going to show you how to crochet this mitered dishcloth. Now you can look in the description box below to see where you can get a free copy of this pattern so you can follow along with me. What I like most about it is that it looks really impressive, but it's not really hard to do at all. In fact, once you get going on it, you probably won't need to reference your pattern much at all. Now, if you'd like to practice learning how to read your crochet diagrams and the written patterns, this would be a good one to use because it doesn't throw you many curveballs and it's fairly straightforward. Another thing I like about this pattern is that you can whip through it pretty quick and it doesn't take a whole lot of yarn to make. So it's a fairly inexpensive gift to make for somebody, but they'd never know it because it looks so cool. I'd also love to encourage you to stop by one of our branches, check out our selection of crochet books, or you can visit us online at volusialibrary.org. Whenever you're ready, why don't you grab a hook and some yarn, and let's go get started. Okay, so today we're going to get started on our mitered dishcloth. Uh, this one is fun because it, it works from the corner and works its way up. Um, this will be using a solid color cotton yarn is what we're going to use in today's episode. Um, you want to use cotton yarn because it's really durable in the kitchen. Uh, and then I'm also going to be using a five millimeter crochet hook because that is what the pattern calls for, and this particular yarn calls for as well. So I'm going to bring in my yarn and I'm going to make a slip knot on my hook. And I'm going to start by chaining two. And the instructions say for the first row to put three single crochets in the second chain from the hook. So that was the very first chain you made. You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So there's one single crochet. Two. Okay. Fraying my work there. <laughs> and three. All right. We're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work. What makes the neat ridged pattern in effect in the in the dishcloth, if we bring that back in, is that we're going to be working into the back loops of our stitches. If you've been following my previous videos, you'll have seen a couple uh, times that we've done that previously, but that's what gives it all these neat ribbing effect. Okay, so let us go ahead and start with that. So for row two, it says we're going to put one single crochet in the first single crochet's back loop. So if you turn it, remember the one closest to you is the front loop, but the back one is the one further away. So we're going to go into that loop only and put one single crochet. And then what we're going to do is put three single crochets in the back loop of the next stitch. So three single crochets all in that same back loop. And then in the last stitch, the back loop, we're just going to put one single crochet. Okay, so we're going to chain one and turn our work. So for the next row, we're going to put a one single crochet in each of the first two single crochets into the back loops. So go into the back loop of the first stitch and put a single crochet, a back loop of the second, another single crochet. And now in the next one, we're going to put three single crochets. Now this is this considered the corner because you're going to follow this kind of similar pattern all the way up. Corner is always going to consist of the three single crochets in the same space. And then in the next two, we're going to put one single crochet in the first stitch and one single crochet in the back loop of the second stitch. We're going to chain one and turn our work. Then we're going to go into the back loop of the first stitch, put a single crochet, single crochet in the back loop of the second and of the third. And then the next stitch, it's going to be our corner. So we're going to put three single crochets in that back loop. And then we have three stitches left. So each one of those is going to get a single crochet in the back loop. Chain one and turn your work. You see in a pattern here, guys? So if the next, this next row, we're going to do four single crochets in the back loop before we hit the corner. 
So there's one, two, three, and four. Now we're at our corner, so this one stitch is gonna get three single crochets in it. And then we'll have four stitches left because our sides are the same length, right? So four, a single crochet in each of the next four back loops. Chain one and turn. So we'll do one more row, but basically guys, that's, that's your repeat pattern. Each, each row, it's gonna increase by one stitch before you hit your corner. So we're gonna go into the back loop of the first single crochet. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Now we're at our corner. We'll do three single crochets in the same space. And then we'll have five stitches remaining. So each one gets a single crochet in the back loops. chain one and turn. So that is what you're going to do for the rest of the pattern. Now if you're following the instructions it says to keep going until you have 24 single crochets on your first edge before you reach that corner. Then you'll put in your three single crochets in that same space and another 24. So once you reach that point come back and meet me and we'll show you how to do the last round where we add in the little loop so that you can hang this if you want. I'm gonna add on a few more extra rows, but um, just enough to make it a little bit bigger for you, and then we will go ahead and, and add on the, the final row with the loop. I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I've added on a few more rounds of mine, uh, but with you, if, you're, if you've reached the end, you'll have had um, your last round, will have had 24, along, 24 single crochets along one edge, you'll have your three single crochets in the corner, and then 24 single crochets on the other edge. So right now I'm at the point where I'm getting ready to add on my, my little hanging loop like this. So I'm on my last row of this and I've got, at this point now you're gonna have 25 single crochets. When you reach your corner, how you're gonna do it is you'll put one single crochet in the back loop of that corner stitch and then you're gonna chain 10. and then you're gonna go back into that same place and put another single crochet. And then you'll do out, you'll complete out your last remaining 25 single crochets into the back loops. But that will create your little hanging loop. It's a little mini dishcloth, do you like it? <laughs> so you'll end up with something, once again, that looks like this. Now if you're looking uh, more closely at the pattern, you'll see that it calls for a different kind of yarn. It, it calls for a scrubbing yarn, and that looks something like this when you crochet it up. And it has regular cotton yarn here, but it also has scrubbing yarn that appears uh, on its own. So this is the ball it came in. It has the, the regular yarn, and then it evolves into the scrubbing yarn as you go. So you don't have to change out yarn types at all, which is nice. Um, I would caution you, if you are pretty new to crochet, this might not be a good one to start this pattern with. Um, it is difficult to see your stitches in this scrubbing part of the, the yarn. Um, if you feel really confident in, uh, and you've watched some of my videos and you feel confident with your single crochet stitches and the way that those look when you, when you reverse it and how to get into the back loops, if you can kind of go by feel a little bit, that helps. Um, by all means, give this yarn a try because it certainly is a lot of fun and it really does, that scrubbing part really does help if you're gonna be using this for dishes, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We have a couple great eBooks that are available on Hoopla that are specifically geared towards dishcloths. So I encourage you to check those titles out. In the meantime, you can find videos like this and more on Volusia Library's YouTube channel. I wanna thank you for joining me today and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.